from the News Channel 5 Network. This is Urban Outlook. Hello and welcome to Urban Outlook, a forum for African American issues. I'm April Eaton. Thank you so much for being with us today. You know, these are certainly trying times. On May 25th, what people are calling the killing of George Floyd happened in Minneapolis. 46-year-old Floyd, an African-American man suspected of fat passing a counterfeit $20 bill, died in Minneapolis after Derek Chauvin, a white police officer, pressed his knee to Floyd's neck for eight minutes. The horrible incident was caught on video by phones of bystanders who pleaded with police. Floyd himself was begging to breathe before he passed out. I know you've seen that video. There are protests, calls for change, demands for justice, and some leaders are saying this time, following this particular horrible incident, something feels different. The Tennessee Black Caucus said the time for hollow words is over. As we continue to social distance here at News Channel 5, Tennessee State Representative Rick Staples is joining me uh, via Zoom to talk about what's happening. Thank you so much for connecting with us, Representative Staples. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for continuing uh, and using the platform to, to keep the dialogue going. Unfortunately, when incidences like this take place, uh, they just leave for a day or so and they move on. So we're, we're continuing the conversation and, and putting it out and up front and making people talk about it is very important. So, so thank you. And, and it's interesting that you say these things happen, these incidents happen, this police against people violence happen. And it does seem like there's a short time of protest and then things move back to normal. But this event in particular, there have been several days of protest. And I know part of it has to do with the length of time it has taken to charge finally, not just the one, but all four of those officers involved. But the other thing is the protests are still continuing multiple days throughout the country. Some say almost as many as 50 states could be participating and even the world. Folks are around the world are participating. Does this feel different, Representative Staples, in your mind? Well, I think what we have to realize is that these protests, individuals speaking out about this horrific murder is just not based upon this particular murder. Uh, we, we are still recovering and dealing with a murder in Georgia. Uh, a black man was just uh, exercising. Uh, we are just at a point to where being vilified for having black skin as a male, as a female, as an older black male, as a young black male, uh, is time out for that. Coming out of the pandemic, as we move forward to recover, we need to not only recover uh, as far as health, especially within the African-American community, but we need to be conscious of economic disparities that we're suffering prior to. And then most importantly, this is a great time to recover from racism. Uh, which is a unique type of murderer. Uh, racism doesn't just murder the flesh and the body. It murders communities. It murders hope. Uh, it murders a sense of self-worth. And so putting this murder on, on front street is, is very important. You have said uh, recently um, that uh, black people are vilified, whether they peaceably kneel or riot in the streets, uh, and you demanded that the legislature go beyond condolences and conversation and take real action. What did you mean by that? Well, first and foremost, if, if you can be murdered while jogging, or if you can be murdered just going to the store, uh, if, if authorities can be calling on you um, just while you're out having recreational uh, relationships with family and loved ones, that's that's ridiculous and we are at a point now it just has to stop uh don't think because uh it's the hot topic that my colleagues and i have a conversation and it stops there no everybody's going to be held accountable on this one uh what are we going to do moving forward we just don't need to hug it out we need to take action steps if colin kaepernick is completely berated and vilified and just trying to speak out of basketball players were told to 
shut up and dribble. Uh, and that mindset still exists, not wanting to deal with the institutional racism that we still have. Until those business leaders, those people that own the corporations, until those elected officials that set the laws and policies that are steeped in racism, that are slanted against people of a certain color, when you can wholesale murder somebody and not be held accountable uh, in a court of law, um, we have to make sure that more so than anything, that we're not trying to make other people feel good. This is going to be an uncomfortable situation. We need to have some uncomfortable conversations. But birth out of the sense of being uncomfortable and being uneasy, we have to birth some action that can heal this land. America is in a terrible place. Tennessee is a terrible place. And this is not just isolated incidences. Please understand that these incidences of murders that have taken place just got caught on camera. Yeah. So there's probably more situations that have taken place we just don't know about. It's interesting. I was looking at some statistics, Representative Staples, uh, and this came from a Washington Post database where they keep uh, sort of a comprehensive uh, running of police involved shootings and killings 100 1000 rather 1004 people shot and killed by police in 2019 of course that's countrywide and then when you look at the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation the TBI's own database of officer involved shooting investigations that they are responsible for 16 uh, to date in 2020 and 45 in 2019 what is the situation in our state regarding um, how law enforcement enforcement responds and whether we have the processes and the policies in place to protect citizens. And we, we can't, once again, let me go back. We cannot just stop with law enforcement because law enforcement is responding to an administration that sets the, the policies and the, the legislative branch at the local level with that administration sets the rules and the regs and the laws that they follow. So we have to start there at the administrative and, lo and legislative branch locally, okay? okay? Secondly, what about the, the vilification of African Americans within the workplace? How many times have blacks been denied an opportunity in this country, in this state, uh, a promotion that can help feed their families, uh, attain American dream because they're too angry, too outspoken, how we wear our hair makes others uncomfortable. So it's just not, there's that out and out sense of violence that individuals are terribly comfortable with Almost as if you're looking at an old civil rights uh, documentary where whites are, are, are just comfortable with riding you down and cold blood murdering you, which we're seeing that in present day. If they are comfortable just riding you down and taking your life while you're exercising, are they still uncomfortable when you go into a bank and ask for a loan as a business person? trying to provide for your families, once again, and, and looting back to living that American dream. What about that murder of dreams when we go into these financial institutions? How many African-American owned, women-owned businesses were crippled during this economic downturn because of the pandemic? How many of our businesses were in the back of the bus, for lack of a better phrase? So it's just not the blood that we shed, it's the hopes that are dashed, and it's sown within, sown within, these policies and practices of these businesses and those at the state and local level from the administrative and legislative arm that refuse to take these matters up to generate change. So, so where do we start? Because these are topics, to your point, uh, the disparities in education, the disparities in the workplace, the, the things that are happening in the streets between our law enforcement officers. And, and I absolutely get it that it's not just about law enforcement, but, but this is the incident that we're dealing with today, what happened in Minneapolis, and then it's trickling through the entire country. Where do we start to find solutions to these issues that we have been dealing with for years, for years? years for decades and that's why the riots are continue to take place if you are afraid of the riots then be brave and do right do right in your corporate room don't just have conversations with the tennessee black caucus of state legislators with empty promises and saying that your ears are open come together as action steps we are in a unique situation that no particular group has the answer it's going to take a collective of individuals putting everything on the table 
and come up with some very unique ideas of change. And we're going to have to do this in concert. Black people and white people are going to have to come together, lay out a real plan of change with logistics in it that can extend past a period of time going into decades, restructuring and rebuilding so we don't have to have these conversations again. And to the President Barack Obama's points about looking at these young people out here being the voice uh, for this systematic racism that they have to live through, that's unique because these young people are our hope. Mm. They are our future, but they fear for their lives. And so we cannot lose our future. And once again, we see in America's history, in Tennessee's history, where the victims are the ones asking for peace. When those that are being victimized are the ones that's trying to lead the change. The ones that are being abused has their hands and their arms open, willing to listen and embrace peace. Now, those that are in charge and are the ones that are architects of the shedding of blood, the dash of dreams, they're the ones that won't meet at the table. So it's going to have to take some people with the right heart and the right mind and not being concerned what they be thought about in an election year and come together and make sure that we have a better future together. I want to take a quick break and when we get back, talk more about those uh, action steps that you mentioned. See if we can give people one, two, three points that they can do right now. Uh, we'll be right back after this. Stay with us.